the feeling of smooth, like brand new black oh, top dude. to rumble strip. The difference. <laughs> I know. Right. How'd you not fall? Have you been right. rollerblading? Yes, yes, yes. We're, we're talking, I know. We're talking I know. Orange County to Compton. It is an immediate, <laughs> immediate shift. <laughs> you you got to cross the guard <laughs> waving at you. You hit those rumble strips. You got something to go, get the f*** out of my neighborhood. It's a quick bird. Fill her up. You're listening to the Gas Digital Network. You're listening to Gas Digital, Best of the Week. The Am I right that you have the first music on Mars? Well, yeah, that was the idea. I need... You know, Alex and I, and, and latterly the band, were involved in the in a in a Mars explorer called Beagle Two. It's a a, a Mars a stationary Mars la- lab looking for signs of a, a life on Mars. Mm-hmm. We sent it to Mars. It landed on Mars, but unfortunately, uh, something went wrong, and the solar panels didn't fully unfurl, and mm-hmm. so the science didn't start. The idea was that it, it took some some of uh, yeah, when it landed and if it all unfurled properly, it would the first thing we have to do is send a, a beep back to Earth to say everything's fine. We thought, why not have that beep be a, a piece of music? So we wrote mm-hmm. a little a little ditty for for it to, to play back. But unfortunately, it never got to do it. So the music is still on Mars in uh, in this rover or in this uh, in this lander. That's um, pretty cool. It, That's fucking perform. cool as shit. <laughs> That shit is hard. I remember this is this was at at the Eagles. There was an attractive girl by the by the bar, and Duce comes walking up to me with, and he's got snot running down his his mustache. I say, and she didn't see the mentors play. So I said, hey, this is my friend uh, Alden Hoke. Yeah. He sings love songs. <laughs> and and she goes, well, can you sing me one? I said, Duce. So, yeah, sing her a love song. He goes, stares in the eye and goes, free fix for a fuck. Get down on your knees and suck, <laughs> and I'll fix you for a fuck. Yeah, uh, and I thought that was so cool. <laughs> she got the acapella uh, El Duce treatment. Have you ever been around like a uh, super celebrity and seen how chicks react? It's disgusting. It's, it's wild. It's criminal. I'm not going to name names, but there's like a specific, I guess we can call him a celebrity. And he's like so atrocious. And there's like young women that hang around him. Yeah. And I'm, you try to pinpoint it, you know, you go like, are you a pervert or are you just famous? Yeah, like, yeah, I yeah. don't, I don't know. I'm calling pervert though. A buddy of mine uh, got to interview Little Wayne, and he said that what, it was like after a show, he's interviewing him, and there, he said there was like four girls waiting just yeah. to fuck him, and one girl was kind of getting like antsy because she's like, "What if I don't get picked?" And she kind of like she was like, "I'll suck your dick right now." Like she was like, "Oh please, the please, panic. Uh, yeah, that's <laughs> amazing." Yeah, just like the audition <laughs> yeah, process. She, yeah, she saw the competition. She saw. She was like, "Please, I'll suck your dick right now." Please, please, please. Dude, I, I've seen that with like a good amount of people. Like I've seen that for Aziz, like a chick. I was uh he was at the cellar one night and like a check locked up to me was like holy fuck like Aziz is here like I really want to talk to him what should I say and like she was like whoring herself up to go say something and then I went and saw I, I had an all access to Drake one time and he oh, fucked that's me that's probably crazy and uh that pussy like, dude I'm, yeah after we got like so lucky like basically my uh my buddy's friend works at Barclays and so he was like, oh, like, I'll give you guys tickets for this show. And like, he met us in the fucking stands. We're supposed to be in like the top row. And he's like, you know what? Let's just see how far we go. So he's like, walks us down to the next level. We get a no problem. Security lets us in. Walks us down to the next level. And he gives us like a badge. Lets us in no problem. So they were like, we might as well try the fucking VIP, like right next to the stage, 10 feet away. And in there is like Drake's dad, 
like hit, uh, fucking Oliver Forty, like all like French Montana, like just stars, and then like a bunch of Colombian bitches. And we're like, let's see what happens. And we walk up to the gate, and we're like, uh, yeah, we have a all access pass. And he's like, well, you need a family and friends pass for this. And then he stuck it on our fucking pass and was like, you're good because our, our friend worked there. <laughs> it was insane. And like after the show, so basically like and they give you like free drinks and all this shit the whole time. After the show, like everybody else is leaving. But if you're in that, the tunnel you go down just goes to like a private room, like a huge like kind of green room in the in the middle of Barclays. And it was like all those people, like all these fucking rappers and shit and watching like a hundred chicks just waiting, going, when is he walking in? Like, you feel it in the yeah. air. And even, like, Drake's dad is, like, fucking sipping orange juice, like, trying to talk to bitches. Like, you know, I've been drinking orange juice since the 90s. And, yeah, she, yeah. and they're just like, okay, Dennis. And you can tell, like, she's, like, the guy that just has to blow him after his orange juice. It's like, <laughs> dude, it's wild, that fucking energy in a room. Well, I think Drake, like, has access to any pussy. Yeah. Like, that, you saw that uh, during the World Cup, there was that hottest chick of the World Cup, that, uh, I think she's Croatian. Colombian bitch. Was she Colombian? Oh, yeah, Croatian. 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 Yeah, yeah. And, like, two days after the World Cup ended, it's like a picture of her and Drake together. Oh, like, yeah. He was like, I saw it, I want it, and I was like, whatever, sent out his spotters, and they fucking, like, he sends them out like flying monkeys or pr something, probably, like, find me this yeah. one. But I also think he does that as like, he's like, okay, what's relevant? And then yeah. he goes, I... Yeah, it's a PR move. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 100%. Even like, like, maybe, like Stranger yeah. Things got popular. I was gonna say, he, wait. Try to fuck yeah. Millie Bobby. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I say, do, you, do you think Drake fucks a lot of 10s? <laughs> <laughs> Is that why he wants an 11 so bad? Yeah. <laughs> With sisters that came out to see the show, right? So here's the deal, right? They want to come and hang out. He like, all right, I'm gonna go and roll a joint up for y'all. I'll be out in a little bit, right? Ghosted Boom. them, right? It's yeah. over, right? Oh, but yeah, yeah. unfortunately, they don't leave the club because they aunt is a waitress. So we in the back chilling, smoking, listening to music. New all year, of a sudden, it's, it's a knock year. on the door, and it's the waitress. And the waitress is like, yo. You know, my, my nieces, they kind of want to come and hang out with y'all, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Now, remember, the, remember this waitress on. Right. So, they come in, right? <laughs> I don't know whether the pretty one has a technique that she did, because... Listen to this shit. The first one come in, pretty one go, I need to leave. I got to go to the bathroom. So, she run off, right? The ugly one in here. What up, y'all? Y'all need me to roll some weed? <laughs> she, she plugged all her businesses in the first five minutes. She's an architect. She does cooking. But not only that, she has an insane <laughs> Roger Rabbit laugh. Like it made like it made Derek look under the couch. Well, like <laughs> he's a song. This <laughs> girl <laughs> was like, <laughs> <laughs> and Derek. <laughs> the younger sister come in and see what's going on, and she like. Hey, 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 hey! Y'all better not make fun of my sister. Hey, y'all, no, no, this not going. Y'all not making fun. like. Big like, sis, mad like that. Like, yeah. tight. Big Came sis ain't caught on. Big sis ain't caught on to the fact that we clowning her. And so now she's slow a little bit. She's a little off. And, and this is Aaron when, Crump. This is when Crump. little sister confirms it. She don't understand <laughs> what's going on. She don't know no better. <laughs> she don't know. And I'm like, okay, well, one... That's your fault for leaving your autistic sister in here with a bunch of drug addicts. You know what I mean? Like that's a weird that's, that's a weird thing to do. Like why bring your autistic sister out to the comedy show and then be like, "Here comedians, have at it." You know what I mean? Leave. And, and you come back when come you back. find the comedians are making jokes. We're doing comedy. <laughs> You're like, why? Hey, hey, don't don't, don't you make fun of her. Trying to play my sister. She, right. So her, the older one, the, the slower one, mm -hmm. she never took her foot off the gas. Never took it off. She the just gas. kept big old leg, just picking kept herself her on the gas. up. I'm this. I'm that. Right, right, right. And we arguing around her. She still, and I can cook. I do this. Right, right. So right. <laughs> That's so funny that she's still going. <laughs> still going. Still going. Right. Says something about the cooking. Little sis is triggered. Yeah, and you tried to bring me a plate with somebody else's greens on it. Ah, bitch, them greens are not. So now they start arguing over greens. Now this is when I've never seen a Arguing. woman. This is where I knew this woman was autistic. Yeah. <laughs> Boom, 128 gigs, nothing but food. The whole camera roll. She was handing us nothing foods. but food. Not right? news. Just foods. <laughs> Just different plates of foods. No nudes. Foods. She, I made this. I made this. So once we see the dynamic here, we start teasing the pretty sister. We yeah. was like, you know what? 
We hated her. She was annoying when we she first her. got here. But, but now we hate you. We, <laughs> we love her. And yeah. now we just started like cheering this one, the dumb one's name. We start cheering the dumb one's <laughs> name. The pretty girl could not take this. We was just in there. We was just, uh, let's say the girl's name it. was Sarah. Yeah. Sarah. 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 Pretty girl to see a take pretty it. girl just be an, an un- jealous of her autism. Y'all ain't gonna fit to play me. Y'all ain't yeah. gonna play me. And she was so, she couldn't handle it. And we just kept fake entertaining. Oh, show us some more pictures of your food. Oh, you made that? Oh my uh, God, that's amazing. Uh, no. And we that. just cuddled up with this autistic chick all night and let her show us pictures of her I'm dumb food, food just to spite the pretty girl. And, and good for the autistic thing. girl. <laughs> good for the autistic girl. She had a great day. Undisputed UFC middleweight champion of the world. All right, so you mentioned uh, your brother Fabian there. He is the number two ranked Bellator middleway right now and just announced he is fighting Gegard Mousasi in Paris uh, with a win. Does he fight for the title next? Uh, and uh, this guy wants to know, how were the brotherly fights in the Edwards household growing up? That's a good question because, come on, you know, that must be uh, why you're such a good fighter. I didn't, I didn't hear what he said. I didn't, I didn't hear it. He, he, he said, your brother's fighting gay guard. If he gets through gay guard, uh, will he be fighting for the belt next? But he said, how were the fights with your brother growing up? Because for me, I had three older brothers, two older brothers, yeah. pardon me, and they used to kick the shit out of me on a daily basis, you know? <laughs> so, so how was that? Um, like, everyone feels like it's like back, back and forth fights, but we didn't really fight much. Like, we didn't really fight much. We were like, I was a little scraps here and there, but, it wasn't like a something that stands out to me that oh, me and him are always fighting. You know, like he's like calm, I'm calm. So it's like it's rare that we that we, that we, that, we, that we fall, you know. But yeah, this fight is coming up in 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 um April, April not May. We we, we gay guard. We um it's really, I can't wait. I can't wait. You know, like he's one step away from fighting for the world title, and to have two brothers winning the world title in the two biggest organizations in the world, like I, I'm excited for. Him. I just want to follow up on that. How do you think a fight would go down? Kamaru and Muhammad uh, versus you and Fabian. Brothers MMA ooh, fight. Ooh. Now Muhammad's a big boy. He's, hey, hey, he's a big <laughs> Did you see his last fight? You see that knockout? <laughs> got that little kid in that Oh, my God. He's powerful, man. He's a, he's he's a, a big, big boy, man. But I, I go with me and go back. <laughs> of course, man. Going to go with that. Um, <laughs> But talk about the best. I mean, I'm assuming you two train with each other, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. he's top of the food chain now, fighting Gate yeah. of Musasi. doesn't get much higher. I mean, that's talk about the best training partner on planet Earth. Yeah, 100%. Um, to have, like I said, to have every brother on the same journey as you. Um, and he's just as good as you can see, can actually train with him. Yeah. You know, it's, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a dream. You know, like it, we can bounce ideas off, off each other as far as like fights go. Like he'll come to me asking advice as far as like ways to move with, with his career and stuff like that. So tell him like mixed martial arts now, family business is it's wild, you know, because I, I knew nothing about mixed martial arts growing up. Yeah. So now to have as a as a as a basically a family business, um, it, it's mad. But I, I I'm very proud of my brother and I'm looking forward to his fight and him, him becoming um world champion, better world champion this year. Hopefully, I mean that wouldn't that be amazing. Your UFC champ, your brother's Bellator champ. Yeah, I mean, it's gonna happen. It's gonna what happen. is your mother feeding you guys? Come on, what is it? <laughs> Rice and peas. Rice and peas. Good Hey, hey, Leon, Leon, you gotta give me a because we say this sometimes, and I get shit for it off some people. Yeah. You gotta give me a right up, oh no. <laughs> you gotta give me one of them and that's all. No, now listen. My mom got that. I got I opened like a, a Jamaican restaurant for my mom. Um, in Birmingham, because you love cooking, so I, I opened like a restaurant for like we, and come to, to the UK next, Mike. You need to right. try it for it. One hundred percent, one hundred percent. But I was talking of you. Let's have a clean right about now. Three, two, one. Right about now. Trust. We were doing shows. Me, uh, Ari Spears, Will Vance. Um, earthquake, earthquake. So we were in Johannesburg and at the same time, there was going to be a heavyweight boxing match with Michael Buffer. And there was this guy named, he was called the white Buffalo, the boxer, white Buffalo. And his name was Bofa something. I can't remember from South Africa, white guy. 
And he was fighting an American, African-American dude. So we were all in the same hotel. We were all in the same hotel. And the guy, the, the, the white South African dude, I hate saying white South African because that doesn't make sense. But the Dutch guy, <laughs> he comes up to me and he's like, he comes up to our table and goes, hey, how you fellas doing? You know, blah, blah, blah. My name is, uh, I'm White Buffalo. And he was really nice. And he came with the dude, like the black dude. They were both fighting, but they knew each other and they were cool. And the guy's like, oh, man, I'm a big fan of you guys. Blah, blah, blah. I said, cool, man. And we're like, well, you guys are going to come to the fight? We're like, yeah, we're going to come. They're both hanging each other. I said, yeah, I'm going to come through. And so we got tickets and everything. And Michael Buffer's like, oh, no. Are you ready to rumble? It was a real fight. So we we're fight voting for the black dude, of course. It's just natural. I'm voting for the black dude. We're all voting for the American because he's American. So we were voting for him. And there were these whites out, white, these other Dutch people sitting around us. And it became, every time the white guy got a couple hits in, they were cheering a little too much around us. They were looking at us going, yeah, yeah, doing that shit. So they literally started with us doing this, this like racial thing that was uncalled for. And then I, every time the black dude, we were like, yeah, yeah. We did this. We were doing the same shit. We were like, yeah, yeah. We went crazy. Then one guy goes, hey, brother, you're in South Africa. Be careful. White dude told me this. I said, okay, and what the fuck are you going to do about it? <laughs> I said, first of all, you're wearing a Yankees hat, so I don't know what the fuck country I'm in. <laughs> so it's then, funny a white guy telling you to get out of Africa. Get out of Africa, right. Isn't that a bitch? So then. <laughs> you keep getting told to go back, and then you're there, that, and you get They say the go back out. to Africa, and I show up, and they there. <laughs> I don't, white folks, leave. stop telling us to go back to Africa because you there too. Go Doing back the same to Africa. thing, apparently. Since the 1600s. So we can't even go back to Africa because your dumb ass is there. And then you tell us to go get the fuck out of Africa. Where the fuck are we supposed to go? God we damn. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, what the fuck is that? Go back to Africa. I, I'm, I keep trying, but you keep showing up. I did, and you, then some guy was rude to me at a boxing event. <laughs> like, what the fuck? And so then these big black dudes. These South African guys come around, and they come to us. They go, don't worry, brother. We have your back. No problem, okay? Don't worry. We were like, hell yeah. Shit, because we had dudes, because they were because these dudes were being rowdy and racist, and we were like, whatever, man. Fuck you, dog. And then the white dude gets knocked out. He gets knocked out. We go, yeah, bitch. We were like, yeah. <laughs> then they get up and leave. But that happens. crazy weeks of news and it seems to have settled a bit this week um i actually have like a numerous football stories i guess this is who i am now leading into the super bowl i don't know i'm working at perfectly centered a lot uh these next couple weeks because uh john campanelli is in los angeles so let's fucking do it let me learn about sports this is my new thing i'm gonna learn about sports mike loves that <laughs> Mike is in his UFC shirt is just fucking so jazzed about that. What's the sport that you want me to know more about? Is it UFC? Yeah, obviously. Okay. Well, that's that, that's what I'm most uh, that's what I'm most likely to be into. I was I for years ago, and I don't like to even admit this publicly, but I was dating a dating a man who liked boxing, and I would never get into something just because a guy I liked liked it, but he would put it on. And then he tricked me by also getting me Taco Bell so that I would sit in front of the TV. Um, and then I ended up really liking boxing. So I feel like if I like boxing, I'm close to UFC. Although UFC feels a little like it just like it just feels a little more violent, even though maybe it's not. Because so, I know boxers get really bad injuries too. The way I did this with uh, with my ex, uh, very similar, right? Right down to Taco Bell or other fatty snacks. Um, okay, but I, I, was, don't know, I don't know that we need to call them fatty snacks, but okay. It was during the Ronda Rousey era. Oh, you tricked her with a woman. Exactly, right? <laughs> and it's like if you're if now if it's a woman telling these same stories that get me hyped and get me like I'm watching whether it's a man or a woman beating the crap out of that man or woman right my dislike of sports has nothing to do with um, sex or gender which you know is rare for me it just has to do with I don't like the sport sports I don't like the things that happen it doesn't feel important to me 
they're literally keeping score. Yeah, I I understand, but it's like it's like we're playing a it, it's a playing a game. Like I'm not impressed by like physical physicality. That doesn't impress me. And I know it is extremely hard, and I know it takes willpower and training and all those things. I respect theoretically, but I go, why don't you just put that into like creating a cure for cancer? And that and that and I'm uh, same things goes to myself because I mean I'm creating art. But then I did read this thing in a book recently when I was still tackling my existential crisis, and it has to do with like kind of nothing nothing matters until you're experiencing grief. Like art kind of doesn't matter until you're experiencing like deep grief, and then that that's the only thing that matters. And that like little blip right there made me feel better. And I can appreciate that many men think of sports and women too, but uh, it's more of a male thing. I think of sports as like as an art form and I can appreciate it in that way. It just doesn't do anything for me. Like even in high school or whatever, when we were like doing competitive twirling and stuff, I was just twirling because I liked twirling. I didn't care what my score was or if I dropped it. I just fucking liked doing it. And so, you know, especially for someone who's like as type A as me, it's I need something that does not getting scored or ranked or competing against my colleagues. That's all. I don't really have anything to say about curling, except I had a roommate that was like a curler, played on a provincial team, and uh, his name was Dallas. And when he would go away on trips, I'd piss all over his clothes. Did he find out it was you? No, but he came home and he goes, something smells like piss in here. I go, I don't know. And then I walked Probably away. You. <laughs> <laughs> Can you push your camera up a little bit? Yeah, what if you just total. said, what if you just said, oh, that's your clothes I pissed on? Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you're trying to fucking fist fight someone. Those are fighting words, right? Yeah, yeah. To tell someone, yeah, I pissed on your clothes. But like to not even deny it is insane. Why, as human beings, are do we sometimes just pussy out and become passive aggressive instead of just going straight to the fight? Wouldn't it be more fun? Watch, pretend you walked in, you bet you've had a great weekend curling. You met some friends, you had sex with some girl, you come back, your roommates there. I had hair at the time. It, uh, the room smells like Kathy Quinn's pussy from down the hall. And uh, you come in, you're, you're a little disturbed. Your nose is, oh, what it smells like? You know your roommate's been fucking all weekend. Shit's not good. You, but you had a great weekend. And then you got to come back and see Aaron Berg, this douche, in there pretending to do homework on a typewriter thing. Hey, what's up, dude? Oh, hey, man. How's everything, Aaron? You know, I had sex with Kathy unprotected. Oh, nice. There's, a, there's an odor in here. Yeah, probably her pussy, right? <laughs> no, kind of. Did you have a dog or anything? It kind of smells like like uh, like sour, like urine or something. Did you piss on anything? What's that? Did you piss on anything? It's It's pungent. It's very strong. I'm shocked that you haven't noticed. You say it smells like piss in here? It definitely smells like piss. I don't. And I'm, as I'm walking closer to my bedroom, it's getting stronger. So what's going on? Let me smell. I kind of like a little bit around here, right? Yeah, like right by my curling outfit. Yeah, like right where your clothes Did are. Did you mostly. piss on my curling stone? Huh? Aaron, somebody pissed on my curling. It's, it's still wet. Look, let me grab this broom and I'll sweep it up. No, that's my, that's the broom I use for curling. Stop. What? Oh. Don't clean the piss with it. I, I just thought it was normal. So you shouldn't piss on this stone or these clothes. No, definitely not the clothes. I didn't know. I, I wasn't Why aware. Why would you do man. that anyway? I, I mean, I, I, I don't like you. I, I frankly don't like you, and I pissed on your stuff. Man, with those strong calves, I'll let you get away with it. You fucking better. Now I'm gonna <laughs> tiptoe down the hall and go piss in a toilet. So strong when you tiptoe. I'm so glad you guys are both here because you were both there. The hardest, you know, when you put, when you, you know, when you put the five, the five laughs in your life, the five laughs in your life was Fourth of July. Yes. At Ari Shafir's the barbecue. The greatest story ever told. Has you, he ever you told there? it on this? Yeah, yeah, he's told it before. Oh. But Lewis, yeah, when Lewis, Lewis uh, rollerbladed home on 9/11 from New York City to Rockland County <laughs> made Shane, Tommy, and Chris O'Connor laugh and they were almost throwing up. I, I, uh, and, I, I, and then I, I, call, I called Lewis I and I go, up. on speakerphone, I go, hey, can you just tell these guys that you did in fact roll over? He was like, 
Yeah, I roll everybody at home. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone, dude, dude, everyone was laughing. It's like it if you, uh, so Chris funny. O'Connor didn't think his Molly was working until <laughs> that moment. <laughs> it's true. It's true. They were la- and then by the way, when you well, guys you know start, then they start, then they started mapping it on their phone, dude, showing how far <laughs> and Shane, ridiculous Shane the ride brought up is. Google Maps from miles. the location all the way to whatever the fucking. And town it's was. just like, dude, you can imagine all the fire engines that were rushing in. <laughs> fire <laughs> engines trying to have to weave <laughs> past Lewis, dude. Let's talk <laughs> on the GW. <laughs> let's talk the Rumble strips. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just him. Going that was there. the best part. <laughs> said, that no, was that was no, that was he was like he stood. That's actually the true. From the so when you go, when you go over the GW bridge, <laughs> dude, they, they the it's a, it's a, a, a listen, it's as smooth as a baby's bud, dude. You're oh. just going, dude. And I'm fucking like, finally, it feels good. I'm pouring You're sweat. You're one of the truck tires. Yeah, dude. I'm like, <laughs> I'm just zipping right, and I I'm going maybe I'm going maybe 35 <laughs> miles an hour downhill from the center. <laughs> Oh, 9-11, dude. <laughs> I'm going, I'm going, maybe, I'm going maybe 35 miles an hour as fast as you can. 35 miles yeah, an hour is crazy, As man. fast yeah. as you can go down the GW Bridge. Who's that Asian smooth, speed skinny Doggy, listen to me. Smooth sailing. I'm talking about, I'm gliding, right? <laughs> and then I hit the end of the bridge, and those rumble strips, they just happen. No, they were there the whole time. <laughs> You don't know. Dude, that would make your fucking you don't know. heart shake. Jay? Dude, dude, this is like an episode of House. Like, throwing you, those fucking those MRIs up on there. You feel a rumble <laughs> strip in a car, and you're like, oh, I feel that. That's crazy. When you're on rollerblades, it sends shocks. You feel your bones through you, Dude, yeah. <laughs> your teeth clatter. Your eyes are shaking. Yeah. I you uh, oh, God. What the Christ was that? <laughs> you just wake up like, where am I? Okay. Yes. Okay, I am the riding the wheel. Oh, oh, I like, oh, I like after the first one, Lewis is like, oh, my God, that was crazy. Well, in the clear. Yeah. Oh, no, again. 12 more miles. Could you imagine showing an orthopedic surgeon this damage? Oh, oh my God. How the hell did this happen to you? Yeah, why is your kneecap in your hip? <laughs> Well done. <laughs> I was doing about uh, thirty-five. You guys, there's no way. There's no way for you guys to understand the the, the exhilaration feeling. of going thirty-five <laughs> on roller blades. Not even just the exhilaration, dude. <laughs> the feeling of smooth, like brand new black oh, top dude. to rumble strip. The difference. <laughs> yeah, dude, I know. Dead. How'd you have fall? Have you been on roller blades? Yes. Yes. We're, yes, we're talking, I know. We're talking I know. Orange County to Compton. <laughs> It is an immediate, <laughs> immediate shift. Dude, you feel you got it. a fucking crossing dude. guard waving at you. You hit those rumble strips. You got some dude go, get the fuck out of my neighborhood. Yeah. Harry, I didn't, you know, I understand conceptually this, but no girl is ever going to understand the feeling of it. But Harrington, we'll never under- Harrington no. yesterday, I'm so sorry to laugh, oh, but you're no. okay now, so it's oh, okay. No. What happened? What did they make you do, You didn't Harrington? even tell me. Was there a ball punching competition <laughs> no. on High Society was, Radio or some shit? What the he fuck was did he have taking to do? The, like, the top of the mic thingy off one thing to put it on another thing, and I turned around so that I hear, like, something bad happened, and he is hurt. And he's he's, like bent over and I'm like what could have possibly just happened that he makes a show of it when he's hurt by the way (laughs) (laughs) so sorry so sorry to laugh so hard but I was like you're gonna hear it (laughs) but like the look on his face was do we have to like call an ambulance because I feel like something really bad happened to him and then when he's finally able to respond to me I'm like are you okay and then he said whatever he was messing with something tapped him in the balls <laughs> I'm sorry how did you hit yourself in the balls how did you hit yourself <laughs> in the balls <laughs> we, we got that little mic stand over there right oh that's and hefty that thing is heavy yeah, and I made the mistake of holding it by like the little square that goes around it <laughs> And so it came in yeah, it gravity pendulum. just oh. gravity just no gravity just dropped it straight down and while it was dropping the weight made it tip forward so the tip <laughs> on top just whacked my balls. Wow. That no. sounds horrible. Yeah, it was so like gravity. Though. Oh, it sucks. Mike, you feel like you want to throw up, right? When you yes. get hit in the balls, it's it's so bad. 
Yeah, I couldn't see straight. Like I, I had the like, <laughs> like the kingdom, like the wah 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 yes. from like an explosion in my ears. The, the look on your face was like, is he like mortally injured? <laughs> you got PTSD now because you fucking. Well, that's crazy because yeah, like shit could happen to your balls where you need to go to the hospital. But it's like every time a guy's hitting the balls, I'm like, I don't know how we're supposed to assess whether <laughs> yes. it's so serious that you need to go to the hospital or whether it's regular hitting the balls. Because yes. it's tough. Because also, we, what do we do? We ask you girls to grab our balls, right? Or am I the only guy? <laughs> Wait, what? I love when my girl grabs my balls. You know, if you're having sex, doggy style, grab, go squeeze my nuts. I like pain on my balls, but it's a different type of pain. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, it's also interesting. interesting. Yeah. I don't think I've ever so had a weird. guy request me grab his balls. So really? I have. So I've had a guy request my my ex of eight years was big Mike. On cover your ears. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> he was big on the yeah, hit grab my his, balls <laughs> thing. Yeah, really? it's a big right? thing. And so, but then I was like having sex like that for like eight years of like uh, grabbing balls. So yeah. I just thought that was like a thing that you do. Uh -huh. So it might have even been you, Mike. You grabbed like, Mike's balls and he, and he the, correcting me, being like, "Don't ever grab my balls. That's not a thing that we do here." <laughs> <laughs> I was actually just saying that, and yeah. not in relation to you. Oh, okay. I've had that happen before. No, I'm pretty sure. I think you might have. I yeah. think I might have grabbed your balls once, and you were like, "This is not a game that we play here." And I was like, wow. "Okay, I didn't know because I." I've been grabbing balls right, for eight yeah. years, baby. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, baby. <laughs> That's one of my signature moves. I was going to kick you in the vagina, but instead, I grabbed your ball. I thought sex ain't over till the balls were grabbed. <laughs> Zach Amico's Midnight Spook Show. All right, real quick. Monkey Pussy. Who you got? You got Chimp Sniz. You got Gorilla Pussy. You got orangutan poontang. You got capuchin coochie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what are we talking about? I want voice? something I'm not going to hurt, but I have a little pecker, so it doesn't matter. What's the one with but the big blue butt? But I can't be on top of a capuchin. Ooh, I don't, I don't remember the name of that one. Yeah, what are whatever the big orange the big blue butt? That's an orangutan. That might be it. Yeah. What, like with the uh, satellite dish face from uh, the new... Uh, Am I confusing them with baboons? No, baboons have big red asses. Okay. I think I might be a baboon man myself then. <laughs> <laughs> Gorilla pussy, I feel like they're just going to like get mad. Yeah. And they're going to rip your cock off. Kegel, Kegel your dick off. <laughs> yeah. Gorilla Kegel. <laughs> yeah, I'm like begging for Robin Williams to do fucking yeah. sign language. <laughs> Give him his uh, cock back. He's still alive. <laughs> he <laughs> promise. Would you not tell him Robin Williams died when my dick is in this? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, are you fucking a man, girl? <laughs> We're yeah. talking about girl pussy. Hey, dude. come on. Chimp Chill out, out Again, too strong. Yeah. It is always funny to me that they told that gorilla that Robin Williams died. There was no reason to tell him the truth. I mean, he did ask. What's up? What's going on, Robin? Uh, that was a girl, though, wasn't it? Coco? Coco, yeah. I mean, watch the news. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. If you get married, nice um, you know, one day I guess I just would. Uh, it, yeah, it just sort of down, seems it just sort of seems like an unnecessary thing to get the government involved. It seems messy if it doesn't work out, you know, which most marriages don't work out. It seems like it's gonna be a hold to do. Just make sure you hit him with the prenup. Yeah, there you go. How do you do that? Yeah, you How put that I... in the with the ring underneath the ring is yeah. the prenup. <laughs> I mean that that's the other thing. It's like how do you even fucking bring that up to a chick? I think you I think that generally if they start poking around about that, you'd be like, Oh you know, oh, like I mean if she's getting married and he yeah. owns a business and he's not getting a prenup, what an idiot, right? Yeah. You start putting that out yeah. there. You start getting <laughs> what that a in, fool. You start getting that into the air that is pretty reasonable to do. <laughs> yeah. That's so weird. Um yeah, I don't know if I I don't know how I would bring that up. I mean, it's also it's not a prenup doesn't necessarily mean oh you're not getting anything if we break up. It just means it's sort of fucking. You have it figured out beforehand. Well, when like you more. own a business, you just be like, listen, like there's no scenario where like I we break up and you own half my portion of this business. It would be just too messy. That like, got to get figured out beforehand. They get the business, no, no, but they would own the they would own, they'd get yeah. the equivalent of the no, business. Wait, if I got married, 
If you have no prenup, yeah, if I got married with no prenup and I got divorced, my wife would have the entitlement no, to you would half pay- of my business. Yeah, you'd, yeah, well, you'd pay her out. That's how obviously, it goes. Is what actually happens. You'd have to put together the money, so you'd essentially have to like take loans out and like pay her out of that or whatever. I don't know. Like, it depends on the judges and the thing, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> Look, yeah, on. he's clutching his pearls. So then like, you just send her this clip, is what you do. That's crazy. Well, it also, I think, depends on. If what would started... she do with my podcast business? She'd ruin it. She doesn't. She would sell it. She'd start she start dancing. Like, she what would sell you know it. What you're doing? She would sell it back to well, you. These, also depend... these fake evaluations you've been talking about on your podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I think it also depends on if you started own... the business while you were with her. No, I don't think it matters, right? I don't the know. I think if you started the business while you were with her, there is some difference to yeah. that. And how long she could say that but... she was taking care of you, doggy. I'm just saying she ain't taking half a gas digital. She's great. She's not taking half a gas digital. I'm just like I'm. She, you can send her this right. Put now. that in oh, the vows. You can send her this right. Now. She's not taking half a gas digital. Get quarter. that in the vows. Yeah, get yeah. that in the vows. Like you're great. You're not taking half a gas digital. Honestly, love of you. Can't wait to spend the rest of my life together. Obviously, if we do break up in that case, gas digital would remain my property. I'll let you know. You may kiss the bride. <laughs> just say, hey, just so you know, yeah. gas is mine. <laughs> gas you know is how this mine. works. Love you. Don't get any ideas, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> her right off I don't care how this ends. Yeah. You're not Stupid taking my bitch. company. It's mine. <laughs> Fuck it. You understand? <laughs> you get it? Fuck it. Get it. <laughs> Don't. All your wedding pictures are this. Yeah, uh, uh, <laughs> that's fucking psychotic. Half the businesses. That's what happened with uh, Bezos. That's why he had to like sell crazy amount of shares or whatever to pay her out, yeah. and then it like tanks the company to sell. It becomes this like whole big debacle. I can't do that, any of no. this. Just so she could take the money and give it away. And she one wouldn't of the even give a biggest shit. slaps yeah. in the face in history. Oh my God, dude. She would ruin the network. It would be all chick podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, she banged. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> that's the name of the show. Yeah. Yeah, no, so I, I mean, I guess, yeah, we could just mention that right now. That's another thing that came, came out of all of this. I mean, I don't know, as I didn't know about this, and I'm sure a lot of other people did neither. Um, but the first place that they found these classified documents was in his, the Penn Biden Center. So the University of Pennsylvania opened some like thing for Joe Biden and gave him an Make office. Money. And yeah, they Thanks paid him a million dollars. Through. Well, they paid him a million dollars. Uh, to open this it's almost like his version of the clinton foundation type thing and then what's very interesting is right after they did that they started the university started receiving tens of millions of dollars from china so something there that's all types of corrupt this is part of the reason why i always say like there's there's a lot of lefties who always harp on uh campaign finance laws like that's the big problem is we got to get money out of politics and i'm somewhat sympathetic to that instinct like i understand at a certain point they're going well the problem is that these private interests buy off the government and then they do their bidding which certainly is true but i'm always like the idea that you're gonna write some it's like it's it's the thing is that they're they're almost bending over backward to not notice what the real problem is so i always say it's like yeah okay write some rule that says what you can't contribute to their campaign or something it's like they'll always find a way i mean look here you go china's not giving joe biden money the university of pennsylvania is giving them money china's just giving the university of pennsylvania money you know it's like they always have these ways look the saudis are not allowed to contribute to an american political campaign you can't take foreign money for an american political campaign but they could donate $10 million to the Clinton Foundation. You know, so like, does it matter that they can't? And so this this impulse to kind of say, let's get the money out of politics. It's like, yeah. I mean, really, I think we'd prefer to get the politics out of money. Um, but you go, look, the, the federal government of the United States spends $6 trillion a year. There is no other organization on earth that spends six trillion dollars a year. You know, it, you're th- th- you're moving mountains. That's how pa- ma- much power is coming out of Washington D.C. And if you have that much concentrated power, the idea that you're going to write a rule that says no one's allowed to try to wield it. You know, I mean, just think think about how ridiculous this is. No one's allowed to try to influence that power or buy it off. It's like, no, the only solution here is to like drastically cut down the amount of power. It's like all these other things are just nonsense window dressing.
Yeah. Yeah, I mean, in case you uh, you don't know, uh, if you're listening to this, El Chapo's son was arrested in Mexico. He's being held. He's not arrested. Uh, the Mexican military rolled up. Uh, fuck, they found him. Like, hundreds of agents were involved in finding this dude. Mm. Found him. 30 people dead in, in the arrest. I think 10 um, Mexican 10 military. And 29, oh, 20 gangsters. And 20 gangsters, yeah. 20 oh. uh, guys, cartel members. Oh. Uh, and now he's busted. And then Chris sent me a thread of just all this social oh, yeah, media it's all, shit. It's, it should be on my. I think it's on my Twitter. It's not. It's on. I got it off. The... It's just terrible video of just like fucking cartel members. A just lighting up this neighborhood and the Mexican military lighting up the neighborhood, shooting yeah. fucking planes. Yeah, yeah, and like Mexican like military helicopters just fucking lighting up just like a residential area, just yeah. like a city. And then there's drone shots. They said 29 yeah. people were arrested. In was sh- murdered in the raid. In the yeah. raid alone. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's just it's yeah. No one's talking about it. And then there was a drone shot of the city. Yeah. And everything was on fire. There was just smoke everywhere. So a trick is that the cartels do is they usually take four to eight tires. They stack them up. They light them on fire. The smoke off the 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 rubber is so deep. They can be two blocks down doing their shit, and you could not tell because the smoke is that bad. They do it a lot. Of hmm. They did that to a journalist in Brazil back in the day. Really? Yeah, like that. It's really bad. Oh, yeah, that is a thick, yeah, it's a, viscous It's smoke. a thick cover. Yeah. And you fool the fire department. The fire department comes there. The cops will always back up a fire department. Whatever part of your world, they always have backup and shit. They'll do their dirt down there. That's how you know Mexican cops are dirty. They know what the playbook is. If I can watch that, I know what it is. They know what it is. They ain't doing shit. El Chapo's kid's not coming, gonna be extradited. No, of course Everybody not. knows that. They've sure. already like even the DEA is like, ah, maybe we should not. He's he's being held just to be held. And, but it's pretty bad fair, when the DEA is like, ah, maybe we should let. This I will say this shit know. legacy wise. El Chapo is LeBron now, and Escobar is Jordan. Jordan's great, but his DNA doesn't go that good. LeBron's DNA is good. One of his kids will make the league. This is a good analogy. El, El Chapo's kid made the fucking league. He's running shit. Hold on, wait good. a second. Let's break this down. Yeah. Michael Jordan's kid fucks Scottie Pippen's ex-wife. Oh, yeah. That's great, but he ain't making money off of that. No, he LeBron's is, ma- he is, is making, making money, money running in a apparel company as Michael Jordan's son. Is he ahead of that company? Yes. CEO. Oh, shit. What's the name of it, uh, Harrington? Do you remember? Jordan? No, Jordan's son. No, it was something else. It was like uh, it was like Game Changer or something. That's good. I've never even heard of that. Yeah, but LeBron's sons will be fine. So will El Chapo's kids and shit. They re- run that... As a father, I would be proud. I thought to myself, I either got ripped off or this is my first case. Shannon, what's the first news story? The first news story is Virginia teacher Abby Zwerner was shot by six-year-olds as she tried to confiscate gun. Okay. Now, um, six-year-olds are bringing guns to school, Mom, Mm -hmm. in this case in Virginia. Um... Um, a six-year-old brought a gun and shot a teacher. You're a former teacher. What are your thoughts? Just bare bones on this article. <clears throat> well, you can't really understand why this child has a gun in his hand. Well, you know, it's just Christmas. Maybe he asked for a gun for Christmas from, Santa Claus. from Santa Claus. Santa Claus will bring you whatever you ask for. And maybe he got the gun from Santa. Maybe. But I don't think so. I think no. he probably found it and took it to school. Well, who would give a six-year-old a gun? My answer would be a, a, a seven-year-old, probably. <laughs> or an eight-year-old. <laughs> trying to be cool. They're trying to be cool. So where would you even keep a gun when you're six? In a diaper? They don't wear diapers when they're six, Michael. They don't wear diapers when they're six. 